Hello audience. Today we will discuss about the electromagnetic compatibility, EMC, on railways products. Electromagnetic compatibility between electrical and electronic systems is an essential requirement for the reliable and safe operation of equipment. It is all too apparent that traction power equipment may interfere with signaling systems with potentially serious consequences. So EMC is one of the requirements to be included in a safety case for the introduction of new rolling stock, locomotives or track maintenance vehicles. The return power conductor in AC or DC railway electrification schemes and is used as a conductor of low power level coded signals for signaling. The interference problem is compounded by the widespread use of inverter-driven AC traction motor drives. Further, the railway constrains telecoms and signaling cables to run parallel to the traction power supply system, allowing coupling of disturbances onto these cables. This can cause interference and induce high-touch voltages. The new EMC Directive, 2004-108-TC and the implementing UK regulations, SI 2006 No. 3418. The railway is a fixed installation under these regulations and the good, EMC, engineering practices used for the installation of equipment must be documented and held by a responsible person and be available to the enforcement authorities whilst the fixed installation remains in operation. The manufacturer can choose for this to be assessed by a notified body. It is therefore essential to manage EMC to meet the technical, safety and legal requirements from project concept by implementing an EMC management plan. EMC testing must be carried out subsequently to verify that EMC has been achieved. The standard EN 50121 the specific harmonized rules for the rail sector to EN 50121 that regulate the electromagnetic compatibility aspects both within the railway environment both between the rail and the external environment. The family of EN standards 50121 it is divided into six parts covering different areas. N50121-1, Generality in 50121-2, emission of the whole railway system to the external environment. In 50121-31, rolling stock, train and complete vehicle. In 50121-32, rolling stock, apparatus. In 50121-4, emission and immunity of the signaling and telecommunications apparatus. In 50121-5, Emission and Immunity of Equipment and Fixed Power Supply Installation Field Radiated DMI tests focus on characterizing the levels of radiated electromagnetic fields emitted from the vehicle to the exterior. The magnetic and electric fields recorded are evaluated against the limits established in EN 50121-5. Track circuit compatibility tests are designed to evaluate the total harmonic content generated by the vehicle and introduced into the rail network in accordance with the N50121 and TS50238. The recorded current signals are evaluated against the limits defined for the particular track circuits used within the project. The permissible electromagnetic emissions from the railway to the outside world are clearly defined by industry standards. For example, in 50121-2 provides guidance on maximum emission levels that can be measured at the railway boundary fence. Induced ground currents due to environmental magnetic or electric fields cannot be neglected in the railway sector as amplitudes are powerful enough to affect surrounding facilities, including buildings, houses etc. Another common contributor to induced voltage is current imbalance in the transmission line. This happens when the current in each phase conductor drifts apart. Ideally, they would all be the same current but often this is impossible to achieve especially for distribution lines because they feed many different commercial devices directly. 
EMI in infrastructure caused by rolling stock. The process for approving trains to operate specific routes in terms of their EMC is complex, and the current EMC requirements for the rolling stock and railway infrastructure are not clearly specified. Thus, a more global view of the electromagnetic interface between the railway infrastructure and trains is needed. This also applies to re-equipping the infrastructure which is both onerous and costly for infrastructure managers. In both cases, generic EMC compliance limits are required. In 50,121.32, Rolling Stock, Apparatus Add electrical and electronic equipment installed on board the Normie and applies 50,121.32 that takes into account both the internal environment railway infrastructure as the external environment. The standard also considers any interference from portable radio transmitters used on board, such as walkie-talkie. The goal of the standard is to define the limits and the test methods to meet emission and immunity requirements in relation to conducted and radiated disturbances. The emission requirements are intended to ensure that the noise generated by the apparatus during its normal operation did not exceed a level that would prevent other equipment to function properly. Similarly, the immunity requirements are intended to ensure that the devices installed on board are not too susceptible to disturbances generated by other devices. Emission and immunity of the signaling and telecommunications equipment and fixed power supply installations. The requirements of this standard have been specified to ensure a level of electromagnetic emission which will cause minimal disturbance to other equipment. The levels, however, do not cover the following cases. A, which may occur with an extremely low probability of occurrence in any location. B, where highly susceptible apparatus will be used in close proximity of the equipment covered by this standard, in which case further measures may have to be taken. The emission limits given are on the basis that the equipment of the product family range is installed in railway substation areas. Filters operating at railway system voltage, for example, for harmonic suppression or power factor correction, are not included in this standard since each site has special requirements. Filters would normally have separate enclosures with separate rules for access. If electromagnetic limits are required, these will appear in the specification for the equipment. The limits in this standard do not apply to intentional communication signals. The frequency range considered is from DC to 400 GHz. No measurements need to be performed at frequencies where no requirement is specified. Emission and immunity limits are given for items of apparatus which are situated a. within the boundary of a substation which delivers electric power to a railway b. beside the track for the purpose of controlling or regulating the railway power supply including power factor correction. c. Along the track for the purpose of supplying electrical power to the railway other than by means of the conductors used for contact current collection, and associated return conductors. Included are high voltage feeder systems within the boundary of the railway which supply substations at which the voltage is reduced to the railway system voltage. D. Beside the track for controlling or regulating electric power supplies to ancillary railway uses. This category includes power supplies to marshalling yards, maintenance depots and stations, e. various other non-traction power supplies from railway sources which are shared with railway traction. The immunity levels given in this standard apply for Vital equipment such as protection devices Equipment having connections to the traction power conductors Apparatus inside the 3 meter zone Ports of apparatus inside the 10 meter zone with connection inside the 3 meter zone. Ports of apparatus inside the 10 meter zone with cable length 30 meters. Apparatus and systems which are in an environment which can be described as residential, commercial, or light industry, even when placed within the physical boundary of the railway substation. Thanking you.